Okay, so here's a collection of some of the whistles and sirens that I have printed out. I'll get some of this cords out of the way. To uh, test off a thingiverse to see how they uh, come out when you 3D print them. And I'll be going through uh, several of these, these different guys here and testing them out. And uh, should be interesting. Let's get going. Okay, so I just picked this one up from the library. It looks like it has some kind of support material in the middle of it. And uh, I just figured I would try testing it out. That doesn't seem to be making a sound. It's not oscillating. Uh, I'm suspecting that maybe I need to break away that support material in there. I don't know. Okay, anyway, so this is on Thingiverse and... I forget what this was. It was like it had a specific name of the person who made it. Let me try removing that support material maybe and see if that makes a difference. See if it'll oscillate then. You know, I'm very interested in physics stuff and maybe doing some high power sound stuff. So I want to start with whistles because they're very simple. And the uh, frequency is kind of partly controlled by the resonator as opposed to other things that make power sound. Anyway, let's take a look here. Okay, I just picked up my uh, whistle. I forget the name of this whistle. This is some kind of fancy whistle. And uh, I got this from uh, Thingiverse. And I was just testing it out. Let's, let's give it a test, okay? Okay, so it looks like there's some kind of support material in here. Maybe, maybe if I break this stuff out of here, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe this stupid thing will oscillate. Oh, oh come on. Ah, it's getting away from me. Okay, so, let's see if I see any other, let me, let me turn on the light here. Oh, gosh. So I think the inside of it, it's kind of like a whistle, but it's built or uh, bent around in a toroid, so it's like a, um, you know, one of those police whistles or whatever. Oh gosh. It seems like it should work. Let me try her again, I guess. See if I can get this thing to oscillate. Here we go. The sport material has been removed. Let's try it again. Still not making a sound. Maybe it's too high for me to hear. I don't think so, though. I think it should be making a sound. I don't know. That doesn't seem to be working. Okay, so... Well, I do, they had a couple different versions on, of this one, and so we'll, I printed them up at a couple different libraries too, so we'll see how, uh, how the other ones come out, and if, uh, if they work or not. So we'll try some more whistles from Thingiverse, and see if we can get some whistles to work. You know, some people made some high power steam powered whistles. That could like blow people's eardrums out or low frequency ones that it could actually kill people. So I don't know. I'm interested in high power sound. Sound carries a lot of momentum. Could be an interesting W E A P O N. We don't know. So um <clears throat> we'll we'll try our next revision. Let's see how that works. Okay, so here is our next whistle that I got, and it looks like this is the V29 whistle. It looks like it's got all the support material in there. And uh, maybe I'll try to remove some of this and we'll get this thing cleaned up. There's support material in the side whistle parts and, and the blowy part here. I don't know if I have things to do that here, but let me, let me just see if I can clean this up a little bit and we'll see if this whistle works. It should be interesting. Okay, so I can tell you right now, it is not easy getting this 
resist the support material out of this whistle. I don't even know if I'll be able to get it all out, but we'll see. See if I can reach down inside that cavity and pull this stuff out, get it out the holes. Wow. Mission impossible here. <clears throat> okay, so let's try this whistle, the V29 whistle. And I don't think I was able to get all the stuff out of it, but it's not too easy. I may have to... Let's... I might try cutting off the bottom of it and see if I can get all the, the build material out of the center of it because it's still not working and I was really trying hard to get all that out. <clears throat> so maybe I'll take a razor blade. Let's see if I've got a razor blade here. Try to cut the bottom off of that thing so I can get the uh, support material out of there and maybe glue it back together and see if it works on. Should be fun. Okay, so I had a different library print out another copy of the V29. Actually, I think it might be a different version because it looks like it's a little bit different. This has got V29 inscribed in the bottom. I asked him to make sure to uh, not put any. Um, build material inside of it and it looks like this one came out printed as is uh, working in working condition let's test it out okay pretty cool so this whistle works this one had the build material in it and I was not able to get all the build material out so it was not working very cool huh okay so that whistle the V29 whistle does work when you print it out without build material in it. Okay. 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 So here's a whistle that I 3D printed. It's a slide whistle. This part actually comes out here. And uh, let's take a look inside of here. So we have just a hole in there and a normal whistle. And the slide part is just like that. And um, let's just try this guy out. This. Uh, this one was hot off the press, and this one seems to work. When you slide the uh, slider in and out, it changes the pitch. Although it's such a tight tolerance, I can't really slide the slider in all the way. And then, of course, if you uh, blow harder on it, it'll go into a higher mode. So, very interesting. But, um... So a slide whistle seemed to work on the first try. And here's a cool program. Let, let's take a look at this. It's a fluid simulator by Dan Schroeder. And I uh, can just draw these barriers up on here. Let's say draw, draw different things in here, like so. And it changes the fluid flow. I can make it flow faster. I can. Plot the density and other things. Try to make an oscillator here. Look at that. So here's our whistle simulator. Change the viscosity, reset the fluid. Oh, very cool. Anyway, just figured I'd play around with this a little bit. Thinking of uh, the similarities between something like a whistle, and I actually work on vacuum tubes, traveling wave oscillators, and they both work on a similar type of fluid instability. Oh, look at that, so cool. Anyway, if you're interested, there's the website. Okay. Okay, so I've been working with this a little bit because it was really tight. Maybe it needs to be sanded down a little bit, but I've just been kind of sliding it in and out here, like so, to loosen it up. Maybe if you put some lubricant on it, it might help, but I think tolerance is a little bit too tight. But let's check it out. So it looks like it actually works as a slide whistle. So very cool. And this one came out. Uh, they actually took out the uh, uh, build material on the inside. 
before I even got it, so I, this uh, part came out pretty clean for these parts. And it looks like it's a functional whistle, unlike some of the other ones, which I may have to do a redesign on some of them, we'll see. Okay, very interesting. Okay, so here's some interesting whistles that uh, I got off of Thingiverse, and these ones didn't require any uh, build material to be removed. And I think they were built with the whistles pointing up like that, and they are able to do overhangs and and such, so that uh, they didn't have to have any build material inside, because each of these seems to work without removing any of the build material. See, that would be hard to get inside of there. Ooh, that one's horrible. So very cool whistles from Thingiverse, and I'll be posting links to those also. Okay. So those those ones worked out very well. You don't need the, uh, you know, some of the other ones probably need the material, two color material printers where you dissolve one of them away because it's impossible to get the material out of the, the resonator inside. But these ones are built in such a way that they uh, seem to uh, not require any removal of material from the inside. Very cool, huh? Very, very good design here. Okay, so here is another whistle, and it looks like this one is also printed with a lot of support material. It's more like a police whistle or something. Oops. Oh, gosh. Okay, I guess it breaks away from the support material pretty easily that way. But the whole cavity here is filled with support material, and so is the whistle part. And, uh... Let's see if I can get some tools to break that out of there. Hmm. Oh, come on. This looks like it could be a pain to get this stuff out, though. And it's in there, too. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Okay. I'm sure it's definitely not going to work with all that support material inside of there. I'll see if I can remove it. Get this thing to work. Okay. Okay, I guess at least this thing has a pretty big opening to the cavity, so let me get a screwdriver in there and try to break up the material. And maybe I'll try to grab it out with needle nose or something else. I don't know. Let me see what I can do. I'll pull this stuff out. Yeah, what a pain. Okay, so just getting those screwdrivers in there and the tweezers and other things. Looks like I was able to break out most of the material and get it out of the whistle. So let's give it a try and see if it works. Okay. Okay, so here's our whistle. Mostly cleaned out. So I guess that one works. Even though you have to remove some of the support material, it's not too bad getting it out. So anyway, I'll be posting links to that one also. Very cool, huh? And this has got the, of course, traditional resonator type cavity. Big round resonator. And, uh, of course, the, uh, Airflow causes the instability to cause it to oscillate. Very cool, huh? Okay, so here's another whistle that I printed out. That's, well, kind of a whistle. It's actually a uh, recorder. And uh, looks like it has... Now, it depends on which way you print these. So it looks like um, this one has some uh, fill in the... Uh, Holes. So anyway, well, the way this whistle works is that you can uh, use your fingers to plug up different holes and then it will make different tones because you're changing the cavity length. And uh, oh, this one's got to be cleared out. It's got a bunch of fill material here and there. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so looks like there's fill material in the whistle part here and um, in the top. And these other ones have film material and these note things that you're supposed to cover up with your fingers. 
Let's see, there's another one there and there. Of course, they were built, printed, standing up like that. And I talked to, I actually had a talk, uh, chance to talk to uh, the guy who printed out these, and he purposely uh, printed them standing up and with no fill material in them. Very genius guy. And uh, he got these whistles to work. So I'm, I'm looking at some other whistles here. Let's, I guess I'm getting sidetracked. So I'm trying to uh, just test some of these other things out. And probably some different people printed these, these whistles out. It looks like this one here, oh, come on, was not printed like that. And it is filled with fill material. And it may be hard to get it back out. So I don't know if this is going to work or not. Actually, let me give this a try first before I put this uh, recorder together. Okay, so here's our whistle, and I suspect it's not going to work. Yeah, it's definitely it's a dog whistle. So uh, let me let's see if I can get this film material out of there before I uh, worry, worry about the other guy. Okay. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Let's see. I got these um, these thingies here, and yeah, see if we can grab that and pull that out. Oh, come on. Yeah, may need some other pointy stuff to try to get in there and maybe try to break this stuff out of here. Oh, let me work with that. And see if I can. Get something to work here. Should be interesting. Okay. Oh, okay, so much fun here. Okay, looks like I can pry some of this material out, but it's probably not going to work unless I get almost all of it out. So here, let's see. And it's no good way to really get inside of there. This is. Very small dimensions here. Get some tweezers maybe and try to grab some of this crap out of there. See if I can break it up and pull it out. Oh, come on. Okay. Oh, I see a big chunk in there. I don't know if that will come out the hole. Oh, let me fiddle with that. See if I can break this stuff up and get it out. Okay. Okay, I was able to get the screwdriver in there and some tweezers, break it up and pull it out that hole without damaging it too much. Let's check it out. I think it might be working. It's supposed to be a dog whistle, so it's supposed to be a very high frequency. And I think that might be a high frequency. Okay, so this whistle works. Maybe if it was printed standing up like this, or maybe it was printed standing up like that, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it didn't have support on the sides, possibly, I don't know. So, Anyway, this one didn't come out as easily as some of those other ones are as good, but it looks like it might still be working. Okay. okay, so let's take a look at this guy. So this is basically a whistle, but it's got holes and a long cavity so you can change the effective length of the cavity, so you can change the tone of it. So I guess that makes it a musical instrument that probably some people would call a recorder. And so we printed this out from Thingiverse. Of course I'll have links to that too. Wow. I don't know why there's build material. Oh, maybe because you got to do the whistle part. Oh, gosh. Oh, hopefully this comes out because this could be a problem if I have to reach way down inside the break this up and pull it out it's going to not be fun ok 
Okay. And of course, this is the place where it makes a sound. It divides the airflow here. Come on. Causes it to oscillate when you blow in through this hole here, the metal piece. Oh, look at that. Okay. Looks like I'm getting this stuff out of there. Oh, I'm going to have to fiddle with this because it's going all the way down on the inside. Okay. Okay. Okay, so using these things, I was able to grab out most of the film material all the way down here. Looks like there's some coming out this hole up here. Let's see if I can pull this out. Come on. Yeah, get this uh, whistle part of this to work, and then if this we can get this to work, then I can work on the. Uh, let's turn on the light. See if we can look down there. Okay. See if I can get the rest of this uh, recorder thing to work. I think I might have some build material plugging up this input hole here, so have to fiddle with that some. See if I can get that out of there. Okay, okay so here's just the uh, whistle part of it, the mouthpiece. And um, I think I may have gotten enough uh, uh, build material, support material, I should call it, out of there to make this thing work if I blow really hard. Look at that. Wow. I mean, it's really hard. I think there might be some support material right in the whistle part that's not supposed to be there because it's not easy to blow, but I am need to get some kind of long, thin material to try to ream this out or something. But let, let's work on the other parts and see if we can get those working. Okay. Okay, so this section here is like the middle section, and... Uh, and it looks like it only has build material on these holes here. All the center's cleared, so this one should be pretty easy to clean up. Just break this stuff out, I guess. Okay, there we go. Oh, look at that, so these are coming out pretty easily. Okay. And, uh, there we go. Oh, there's one on the back, too. Okay. So I think this section is cleaned up. And then the last section here has these, I think, tiny double holes up at the top. Except for this one. This is a single hole. Let's look down there. It's all clear on the inside. Okay. And I don't know if I can get it with this guy. This is these holes are kind of small. Okay, come on. And I'm not quite sure I'm not a musical expert. As to why they have double holes down here. Okay. But oh, look at that. I guess just push it in with a screwdriver. Break it through. And there we go. So I wonder if we can just start assembling this guy. I assume it goes like this. Remember, I had the player recorder when I was in school. Okay, it's a little bit loose fit there. Hopefully it stays together. And, oh look, here's the last piece. Okay. And this one's not fitting together as easily. Oh gosh. It's got a break there, that's not good. I may have to sand that down or something because it's gonna seize up. So this, this joint is loose. Let's take a better look at this. Okay. There's our recorder. 
Let's see how it works. Okay, so here we have our recorder. Okay. Yeah, I still have that break in there. I'm gonna have to fiddle with this thing because uh, oh, it's stuck on there now. Let's just just to see how this works. I'll get my fingers in position. Let's see if we can make some noise with this. out in a second so um i don't know i'll have to look at this I, there might be some um some uh build material that i haven't cleared out properly but uh i'm not having too much luck at this thing to work right now i'm gonna pull this back apart here oh maybe i won't it's stuck okay anyway very cool huh I'll fiddle with that some more. If I can't get it working, we'll just move on to the next device and see how that works. Okay, so I just got this one printed out, and this was more like a siren than a whistle, per se. Oh, uh, well, that's interesting. Okay, so this is the rotor. And uh, I'm not sure how well that's going to spin on there. And uh, I should work this in a little bit. Okay. Get some of these loose threads off of there. And here is the top of that guy. And it looks like it goes on there. Let's see if this will go together like so. Looks like there's a pin in the center and another pin on the outside. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Ah. We have to route it out with a oh. drill bit or something. It doesn't seem to be fitting on there very well. Let me fiddle with that. Okay, I just had to press it a little bit and it looks like it has kind of snapped together. And there we go. Let's give this a test, I guess. <coughs> okay. Looks like it's got a little bit of air gap there. That's not great. Maybe I can glue it together or something. Plastic is a little bit deformed there, so it's got a little bit of a gap. We'll try it out and see how it works. Okay. Oh. Oh, the rotor's not spinning very well. Now I'm going to have to loosen that up a little bit. I think the parts are fitting together too tight. Okay. Okay, here we go. We got a screwdriver to pry this thing apart a little bit. Let me get that back apart. Let's take a look on the inside here. Come on. And this rotor, I guess, is, I don't know, it seems to be spinning fine now. Let's fiddle with it a little bit and see if we can loosen things up. Maybe it's rubbing on the top or something, I don't know. Okay, I guess the top was rubbing on it. I pried it apart and now it's got a big gap. Maybe I could tape that or glue it or something, but it seems like i got to have it up. Maybe I could sand down the rotor, maybe the rotor's too thick, but... Anyway, it seems to be rubbing before, so it was not producing noise. Now it, now it does. I don't know if you can see the rotor in there. Let's turn on the light. How about that? What?
Okay, so that's that whistle. Thought it might be a little bit louder, but maybe if I uh, close up the gaps in the side. Or sand it down so it spins a little bit better or something. Maybe it'll work better, but I don't know. That's this guy right there. Okay. Okay, so I just got this print back. It is the... Uh, siren whistle and again this is not a true whistle this uh, uses a rotor to modulate the airflow and it looks like it has some kind of horn to uh, match the impedance of the waves as they come out and here's a mouthpiece looks like i'll have to remove some of the uh, um, build material there and let's see what we got here oh come on okay Looks like the rotor. Looks like there's some build, but oh no! I guess it's these uh, veins are rotated so that they spin the rotor as well as modulate the airflow. Okay, so I'm just going to have to remove this build material. We'll see if we can assemble this. See if it works. Should be interesting, huh? Okay. Okay, so here I remove the build material there. And uh, I guess that's what that guy looks like. Looks like it's got eight diverging holes. And uh, this must be the thing where the rotor goes in. Looks like it's got a little pointy thing in there. And here's the rotor. I gotta clean that up a little bit. Okay. And uh, someone's getting a little bit carried away with playing video games, I guess. <laughs> okay, so let me clean this rotor up and see if it will spin inside of that little piece there. And it um, should be interesting. Let's see if we can figure out how to fit this thing together. Okay. Okay, so it appears that the way they make the bearings is they made these little cone type shaped things. There's a little cone shaped thing in there. So here's the rotor. And we'll just see if that fits down inside of there and see if that spins okay. Let's see if we can get something down there to spin that. Okay. So looks like that might work. And then um I believe this is going to go on top, and you probably want it to be lined up. Oh. So it's lined up with the holes up here, so it's modulated by that. And I might have to cut this back a little bit, because this really has a negative tolerance there. It's not fitting on. I've been using a the razor blade knife to kind of scrape down the edges may have to be sanded down maybe too big these 3d printers have different tolerances let's see there's another place for the cone to go inside of there so that acts as the bearing on the top side okay very cool huh we'll have to see if we can get this thing to work I'll have to fiddle with this um okay and again this horn here is to uh, match the impedance of the wave as it comes out into free space so it should make it a lot louder very cool huh but actually i think maybe this might be a critical thing to line up first here's the nozzle that you blow in and this is the part that holds the rotor and so you can line those up by looking through the holes, make sure those are lined up properly. Well, I'll just try to get this together. And uh, yeah, let me fiddle with that. These parts are not fitting too well. But, you know, 3D printers have a, sometimes they'll print a little bit thicker parts depending on the tolerance, but so you can see through the holes, so maybe, maybe that's about right. 
Okay. I'll just push it down. See if I can push this, these two parts together. Get that situated. Okay. Okay, so I just pushed it together like this and it made a pop and sound. And it looks like the holes are still kind of lined up. See, it makes the airflow kind of diverge out. These holes are a little bit further out. And uh, there's our rotor. Maybe I'll try blowing out it to see if it spins. super great but um I think there's a lot of friction on my finger it looks like it should spin fine well, let's see is there anything I can stick down I'm gonna try test spinning it okay so definitely the rotor spins freely so I guess the next thing would be to put this guy on top and I probably want to line up the holes so that the air flows through is aligned with the bottom input. See these are twisted. They're like a ro rotor. So I have the input lined up with the bottom of the hole and the output slightly twisted so it's lined up with the top of the output so it modulates the air the most. And I'm going to have to definitely fiddle with that a little bit to get that right. Looks like it's rotated maybe, I don't know, a few degrees. Okay. Okay, I think there might be a little bit too much slack in there because I, I, I think you probably want the, the uh, rotor pretty close to both the input and the output of this so it modulates the air better, but I'll uh, give it a try. I kind of got it stuck right now, so I may have to pull it apart and sand it a little bit. <laughs> not making a lot of sound but I think it's not modulating the air enough so uh, I definitely hear it spinning in there so I'm going to try to take it apart and fiddle with it some more okay should be pretty cool if we get it right okay I guess these uh these lines here are supposed to be like alignment marks I got it aligned these two are aligned but they're not aligned for those marks they're just aligned for the holes in the bottom but it's hard to line this up with that because you don't know how much of a twist to put on it so I ground this outside down a little bit with the uh, pliers. I just put the pliers around the outside and twisted it. And uh, now it seems to be fitting in there a little bit easier. Okay. Might have to grind it down some more. And then we'll give it a test. Okay, okay it looks like I did it. I uh, shoved this part in too far, so now it's not spinning. And uh, I, don't, uh, I used, uh, I tried to pull it back out. I got same, uh, some uh, vice grips and a pipe wrench and tried to pull the parts back apart and it just broke. So I think it's shoved together too far so the rotor didn't spin and I couldn't pull it back apart then. So maybe I'll try to print out a new one and see how that goes. There's the horn broke off of this guy. Oh well, I still can't pull it apart. It's all stuck together and the rotor won't spin. <laughs> doesn't spin anymore. Oh well. Try that again, I guess. Okay, so I reprinted that part out. And um, let, let me break this out. And uh, we'll get the parts ready and we'll try to build another one of these uh, whistles. So remember our last one. Uh, kind, of, kind of broke apart here. And we'll see how this turns out. Okay. Okay, again, I didn't notice it before, but there's some alignment lines here, and I believe if you line those up, there's one on this part, the part you blow in, the part that holds the rotor, and there's one on the horn as well, See right there. Oh, it's hard to see it in the light. Anyway, there's a, a line there as well. Oh, there it is. And I think if you line all those up, 
it gets these things lined up properly. Again, it's kind of hard to judge how to align this with respect to the rotor because there's a little twist in this guy and you probably want the holes to be lined up with that and that when the air is supposed to go through and not lined up when it's not supposed to go through so that you'll get more modulation of the air. And uh, let me just try to put these two pieces together and see if I can get them lined up first like I did before. And then this, well, you know what? Actually, maybe I'll do these two pieces first because this is the problem I had before. It's getting these together and working properly. See, there's a little, um, what do you call it? Cone shaped thing it goes into a cone shaped socket and that acts as the bearing. Oh, and it has one on the other side as well. So our little rotor can sit in there and be aligned into the center and spin. Let's see if I can spin it better with my right hand. Of course, when you blow it, it's going to spin. Very cool, huh? And then this guy's going to go on top. So I might align these two. Get those alignment lines lined up like so and put this guy together and see it, it's a really tight fit so you have to press it really hard what happened is I pressed it too hard last time and it came down so it kind of crushed this thing so it wouldn't spin it's going to be kind of loose in there but not too loose if it's too loose it will wobble around it won't sit on the bearings it'll rub against the sides if it's uh, too tight it's going to pinch it in there so it won't spin so this is the really critical part right here and in fact you probably don't even need this nozzle thing you probably just blow on this part but uh let's see if we can get this part working okay okay let me retract what i said there's eight holes in this one and there's seven holes in that one and there's seven in that one so it's just between this part and that part that is modulated these only carry the sound out so these do not have to be aligned critically to those okay okay so let me revise what i said i just realized there are eight holes in this one and there are seven in that one and there's seven in the rotor so it's alignment between the rotor and this guy that modulates the sound and uh so i guess this orientation is not critical so i guess we'll just put this guy together and we'll see if we can get this thing to work okay Okay, so I got this much of it together so far, and I'm scared to push it too much more closer together. But uh, let's try it. That takes a lot of air to blow it, but it does seem to be spinning. And uh, I guess I could put this end part on it if I wanted to. I'm afraid I'm going to crush it too much. You're just going to be adding more resistance in there because you got to blow through this part as well and you'll blow through those little holes so I, I think probably just blowing on this is fine this is all you need in my opinion so anyway very cool huh and um let me fiddle with it a little bit more i'll see if i can press it together a little bit better and see if a little bit more and see if it, i can get it to make a louder sound without destroying it Okay, okay, I fiddled around with it a little bit more, and uh, I think this is about as good as it gets. Let's try it. Oh. Getting up to a higher frequency now. Oh. No, not anymore. Anyway, we'll move on to the next whistle. Very cool, though, huh? Actually, this is a siren. It's not really a whistle, but it still makes noise. Okay, so here is some 3D printed parts for a whistle siren. And I'll put this in the description as well. And uh, looks like this has still got the base on it, so let's remove that. And we'll put this thing together. Ouch. Okay. 
there. There we go. Okay, so here is the base of it. And it has this, this the rotor is pretty cool. Look at that, it looks like a little turbine. And that rotor fits right on there. Okay, my one complaint though is that it doesn't have, you know, the other one had two uh, pegs to align these these things, the top and the bottom. This doesn't have any alignment, it's just flat. So I got a number six screw. Here's, here's a number six screw. And uh, put that through. And I think you're going to have to probably glue this down to get it to perform properly because air will leak out all along the edges here. But at least this keeps it in position at one point. So you can... I don't know, whatever. I'll have to hold this down. So let, let's give this one a try. This is, this is uh, about the third... Uh, whistle siren. So this one works by modulating the air. It has a turbine that spins on the inside and that causes the air to modulate and that makes the uh, whistle sound which is not really a whistle instability at all but just uh, direct mechanical modulation. Okay so let's try this out. Okay. okay so here's this whistle siren and we'll give it a try. I'm holding it together so the air doesn't leak out. Okay, very cool. That's that's probably the best whistle siren I've printed so far. It spins. It's easy to put together. It spins freely. Um, okay, anyway, I'll be posting links to this guy. Maybe if I put glue along the edge here, it would hold the air in better and work even better yet, because I'm having to blow pretty hard to make it spin. Very cool, huh?